Okay, and there's quite a lot of stuff here, and we're going to do this in one day. Yeah, we are, because a lot of it is review. In fact, you did do this back in exponential algebra. Um, and you're going to feel like, wait a minute, I already know what I'm doing here. But there's one step here where we have to pause. Marco, quit calling. And what I need you to do is stay with me through that time. Joe, get that phone for away. Attention up here today. Okay, I've got to speed teach because we've got our short and schedule here. So we are looking at graphing two variable inequalities. Big deal. That's an X and Y. We've done X and Y before. Yeah, we have. So, a linear inequality. Okay, now that's different. We've been graphing stuff with equals. Now we're talking about stuff less than, greater than, all of that good stuff. So, a two variable inequality whose graph is, it doesn't say a line, a region. It's actually called a half plane. What that means is, we're going to have a boundary line. I mentioned a bounded line up here. And we're going to shade on one side of that line. And that tells people all your solutions are over here forever because there are infinitely many solutions. Now, why does it work that way? Um, if I asked you to write down all the numbers greater than 3, when would you stop? Never. That's why we have to have this visual graph to show, hey, all this yellow stuff and anything else that would be out here if you made a gigantic parking coordinate plane would be answers. And for this one, anything down here below this line. And I start thinking, well, how come one of these is dashed and the other one is solid? Because this one doesn't get an equals bar. This is called the boundary line. So what we're going to watch for is if it has an equals bar, we give it a solid line. If it doesn't have an equals bar, it gets a dashed line. And what that means is these are answers on this line. Not on this one. These don't work. So when it's equal, we do the solid piece. The shading there, like I said, that's called a half plane. And so what we're going to do is we're going to graph a boundary line just like we've done in the past. And then we're going to go ahead and test to see which side we should be doing the shading on. So there's our boundary and our half plane. Down here it says solutions to the linear inequality are represented by the shaded region. Are the points on the boundary line considered solutions? Well, it depends. If it's dashed, no. If it's solid, yes. <coughs> so dashed, no. Solid, yes. And that's the part that people forget. When we know where a line is supposed to go, we want to just graph that line in there right away, but we have to pause and say, okay, should I graph this solid or dashed? So to graph them, first we graph the boundary line. But like I said, that's where we have to pause and think, okay, wait a minute, should this be dashed or should this be solid? Now, if it's in slope intercept form, we're just going to use y equals mx plus b. We're going to graph it. If it's in standard form, we're going to use the thumb method to find the zeros. We'll have a super fast graph for that line. But at that point is where we have to push the pause button on our brain. That's right here. Pause. Because we are going to want to make those lines solid. We are so used to that. However, if it's less than, greater than, we have to put the dashed line. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, then we're going to make it solid. Then, we're going to test the point to figure out which side we're going to shade. We're going to shade the left, the right, the up, the down, depending on where that line is. So that's the next part. Now, your test point can't be on the line itself. But if you can, we would like to use 0, 0 as our test point to have it uh, be pretty. It's really easy to work with 0, and we'd love to be able to do that. So the test point can't be on the boundary line. If at all possible, use 0, 0. Plug it into the original inequality. If it works, we shade on that side. If it doesn't, we shade on the other side. That's just what we do. So that's what all of this blah, blah, blah is about. And that's the only blah, blah, blah today. It looks like everything else is pretty much example, example, example. You know, we just keep going until we're done. So this one. What is the graph? of each any 
equality. Step one, we're going to get ourselves aligned. Y equals 3x minus 1. That's where we're going to start. If you had to graph that line, where would you go? Down 1. There's our first point. Where can you put that? Up 3 and right 1. Now here's where we have to pause. Because it's a sh dashed or should it be solid? It's dashed. If we get in too much of a hurry, we forget that. Because one side of this works and the other side doesn't. So I look at this and I think, you know what? I don't think zero, zero is on that line, even though I wasn't graphing perfect there. I don't think it's on there. So what I'm going to have to do is test zero, zero. If it works, I'm going to shade where zero, zero is. If it doesn't work, I'm going to shade on the other side. So whenever we had to check our answers before, where did we put the numbers? Back in. That's what we do. Zero is greater than three times zero minus one. Okay? So that would say zero is greater than negative one. On the number line, is zero bigger than negative one? It sure is. So we're going to shade where zero, zero is, which means this side. So everything over there, because it's huge, everything over there will work. And like I said, that's an infinite amount. Solution, so we don't want to have to write them down. We want to shade them so we can see what we have. All right, next one says y is less than or equal to 3x minus 1. How do you graph that line? Down 1, then 1. Up 3 and over 1. Hey, isn't that exactly what we did on the last one? Until we get to this point. To should it be dashed or solid? Which one? This is solid. This has an equals. So we need to make this a solid line. Well, is zero zero on that one? Well, let's test zero zero. That's the easiest point to test. So is zero less than or equal to three times zero minus one? Is zero less than or equal to negative one? No. So we can't shade on that side this time. We have to shade on the other side. We have to shade there. So it's one side or the other. Never both. One side will work and the other won't. Now if I'm doing this on a test, I'm probably going to test another point just to make sure because it's a test, you know. I might check the point five zero and make sure that that works, just so that I know everything's going to be okay. So if five zero is my test point, this would be zero. Zero is less than or equal to three times five minus one. Is zero less than or equal to fourteen? Now I know it's what. Now I know I have the right answer because I have a feeling on Monday you guys are going to zip through this test, so you'll have plenty of time to go back. All right, let's take a look at A. How do you graph it? Up one. From there. Down two and right one. What's your pause for? Is it dashed or is it solid? It is solid. Does it look like it goes through zero, zero? Well, let's test zero, zero. Zero is greater than or equal to negative two times zero plus one. Oops. I'm already doing it in the steps in the brain. I'm going to stop that. Is zero greater than or equal to one? No. So I can't go over here because that's where zero, zero is. I have to go over here. That's where all my solutions are. Uh, seems kind of silly to me a point we have to make with this one. So again, we're going to start at 1, down 2 and over 1. But here's the big difference. What do we do next? Dash. What's 
that's zero, zero again. Why not? <coughs> so zero is less than negative two times zero plus one. Zero is less than one. True? False. True. So we're going to shade on the side of zero, zero. All stuff that we knew, except for the dashed versus solid and the shading. That really is the one piece that we need to make sure we get back. Now, I know that on the next page there's a word problem. We're not going to go to the word problem. We're going to go to the absolute value graphs. Because you can do this with absolute value graphs. You absolutely can. Graphing two variable absolute value inequalities. We're going to solve for y, graph it using a, h, and k, so graph using those transformations, find that boundary line, except now it's not a line anymore, it's a gate because it's absolute value, but we still have to make sure we do the dashed versus solid thing, and then shade, so the shading on this one is either going to be inside the b or outside the b, those are the two choices, you're in it or you're out of it, so we'll graph, y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. And then we'll stop and say, okay, should this be actually solid? And then where should we shade? Uh-oh. That doesn't look right. I would like it, love it, in fact, if it looked like this. Because all of you are super fast at that. You know how to graph that way. So can we make that purple thing look like the blue thing? Oh yeah, let's get that one behind here where it's supposed to be. But now it's got a negative one. Yeah, divide everything by negative one, but there's something we have to remember when we do that. We do have to switch the sign. Ooh. So when you divide the absolute value of x plus 2 by negative 1, you're really just putting a negative 1 in front of it. And then negative 1 divided by negative 1 is plus 1. So where does that graph start? Negative 2, 1. Good. Vertex. HK. Negative 2 and 1. Negative 2 and 1. Where does it go? Down 1 and right 1. That's what the slope is for the right side of the graph. So down one and then one. Now that's our right side. Try not to make it solid just yet because do we know if this is solid? It's not, is it? That's hard to do. We get really good at this. We're doing this really fast. But do the other side, backward slope, down one and left one. And then again, you have to pause and say, Get solid, this is going to be dashed. So the next thing I want to know is is it okay to use zero zero on this one? Yeah, our B is not on zero zero. It'd be perfectly fine. So let's go back up to the original and let's test zero zero. One minus zero is less than the absolute value of zero plus two. 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, and the absolute value of that is 2. So take a look. Is 1 less than 2? Yeah. So we need to shade where 0, 0 is. Yes. Don't throw stuff in my classroom. What's that mean? Do you see how the hardest part is stopping yourself? so used to that. But we know how to do it. It's just we have to stop ourselves. So that one doesn't look right either. How can we make that one look right? Somebody besides Tori, how can we make that one look right? Add four. <coughs> so y is greater than or equal to two times the absolute value of x minus one plus four. Where does that graph start? Where's the vertex? One, four. How do you get the right? 
right side. Up two and over one, good. Don't do it. I know you want to do it. We have to think about that. Is that going to be dashed or solid for this one? Good. This time we can actually go with our gut and say, yes, got it. And then up two and collect. Test zero three for this one. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Um, zero minus four is greater than or equal to two times the absolute value of zero minus one. Zero minus one is negative one. The absolute value of that is one. So negative four is greater than or equal to two times one. Negative four is greater than or equal to two. Is negative four greater than or equal to two? Nope. So we're not shading outside this time because zero zero didn't work. We are shading inside. Write that down as well. Very nice. So we have to be able to graph these inequalities. Now at times, they're going to give us the picture and they're going to say, write it for me. Okay. So what we do is what we did when we, this one's absolute value. We're going to write an absolute value function and then we're going to think about which way this is shaded. So y equals a, absolute value of x minus h plus k. Let's find the vertex. What's the vertex for this little line? The outer face. What's the vertex? 3, negative 2. And that is our h and k. Now all we have to do is get a, which is the slope of the right side of the graph. What is the slope? So we're going to have y equals 1, which we don't typically write down, x minus 3, absolute value, minus 2. Now notice I left a space. My first thought is, should I put an equals bar on whatever it is I'm going to put in there? Nope, not this time. So this is either going to be less than or greater than. So what I can do is I can put a point in here and see if it works. Makes it true and, and think about whether or not it'll be less than or greater than. So I would like to test a point that works, which means I don't want to use zero zero. You see another nice easy point close to zero zero that might be good? A one. Yeah, let's see if one is gonna work. So one absolute value of one minus three minus two. So we have to make this work. Well, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but the absolute value of that is 2, so it will be 0. How is 1 related to 0 with either a less than or a greater than? Greater than. That needs to be greater than. Write that down. Now, what's the easy way to tell? If you're only graphing up and down, when it's up and the shading is above, it's greater than. If it's below, it's less than. But we're not always guaranteed that. Sometimes they open down, and so it's a good idea to check it and make sure it's going to work. So this little one down here is down a bit. Now, notice this one, they go by twos. So be careful. What is the vertex of that? Good, negative 4, 3. Now we need the slope of just the right side. Down 3 and over 3. It's actually just negative 1. That's all it is. So it's going to be y negative absolute value of x plus 4, because we always have to do the opposite there, and then plus 3. Uh, a nice point that works. Yeah, 0, 0. Let's see if we can make this make sense. 0 something. Negative 0 plus 4, absolute value plus 3. So let's see, 0 plus 4 is 4, absolute value of that is 4. Negative 4 plus 3, what's that? Negative 1. So if you had to put something between 0 and negative 1 and it had to be less than or greater than, what would you put? Greater than. Should we put an equals bar under that? How do you 
be home. Yeah, it's Dash. It's Dash. Just a normal police car there. So, like it says, you can tell from looking at the inequality, it has to be doing your bad because it's a bump. You know, if, if we're just graphing up opening and down opening absolute value, above is going to be greater than and below it is going to be less than. So, you can kind of use that same technique unless, look at this one, is this in the right form? Well, it needs to be y equals something. So we can't really use the up and down thing up for greater and down for um, less than unless it's solved for y. But all of you guys know how to solve that for y. So that would make it a little easier to graph. Just for a few things. Well, I want to see your 43210 on graphing linear and absolute value inequality. Obviously graphing, so that's why you see people getting up to get graphic paper. Yeah. Yeah. 